I fight everyone. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. We gather here at St. Thomas Parish. We pray for Antonio, so it's a privilege for me to be able to come out to anoint him. Um, and then to be with the family, so the night that he passed. Um, so that's a great blessing the priests have of being able to share the graces and the mercy that God offers, especially at the time of death. So we think about asking the Blessed Mother to pray for us now and at the hour of our death. And so in a, in a particular time, for when it comes time for us to meet the Lord, it's a, a very special time of mercy. So let us be reminded of the promises that the Lord gives to us, the mercy that we receive, and especially of the forgiveness of sins that we know in baptism. Our brother Antonio has died with the Lord. May he now live with him in glory. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Antonio, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, mourned and heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever, or others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Amen. The response The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, He gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul, he guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is none. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, 
Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If you have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, but for he cannot die, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the soldiers came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other man, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. And please be seated. So I so this is your uh, uh, welcome here at St. Thomas Parish. I'm the pastor of Monsignor Gray. I know I, I met just the immediate family uh, the night that Antonio passed, um, and uh, I know that I didn't have the opportunity to, to uh, meet him uh, very much prior to that. So a lot of these comments that I have today are really just reflections more on the mercy that God gives to us, and it's an important thing. It's a very consoling thing. Um, and it's something really for all of us to hold on to. And, and really, isn't that really what's most important? It's not so much anything that we ourselves have done. It's what Jesus has done for us. That's the thing that really matters absolutely the most. And uh, so that is a good lesson for us to be reminded of. It's, in fact, it was St. Paul or St. John who uses that language that it's not so much that we have loved God, but that God has loved us. And for that reason, we are filled with great courage. Um, so the, uh, the gospel passage that we have today, and I'll just start here because this, this I think, people say, well, we're hearing this passage about the crucifixion. And we're like, oh, my goodness, that's a terrible passage to read. We're hearing about Jesus' suffering on the cross. But not only is Jesus' suffering on the cross redemptive, that's how we experience salvation. It's because of what Jesus did in dying on the cross. But we also see one of the criminals, one of the thieves, the good thief by tradition that, that we uh, hear about, the one who is um, crucified with Jesus on the right, he experiences this mercy in a particular way. So we have this great promise, um, the amen I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now you might have your favorite passage in scripture, you might have your, your favorite verse and you say, well this is the best verse in all of the Bible. And I'll, I'll let you defend your verse. If you want to pick your verse, you pick yours, and I'll pick mine, and that's fine. So we can all have our favorites. But it strikes me that these words are maybe some of the best words that we would ever wish to hear. If, we, if there was ever anything in the gospel that we would want to have spoken to us, I think it would be these words. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Um, so I, I do thank the family for calling me um, to give me the opportunity 
to come out to offer um, the sacraments, to offer blessings, to be with them, especially at the time of loss. Um, because it is a great privilege that priests have in being able to reach out with these riches, with the source of grace that is entrusted to the church and that, and that priests bring, um, especially to those who are ill. In fact, um, one of the things that will happen shortly after this Mass, um, we uh, received another phone call, so there's another circumstance where I've been asked to go out to anoint someone who is dying, and uh, so we said, well, we have a funeral mass, so, we'll, but right after the funeral mass, we can go. So I just, so, but this is important that we be here for this mass. But shortly after this mass is over, I'll be with you enough to, we'll get the luncheon started. There was a luncheon for everyone who would like to stay. Um, then, unfortunately, after that, I'll have to go to the hospital and then look after another person who is, um, who's dying and who is approaching death. Um, but here are these wonderful words, and they're merciful words, just like we receive, especially when, when receiving some of the last rites, or receiving those blessings, um, especially in, at the time of death. Remember me, or today you will be with me in paradise. Now here's the reason I think those words are so important. It's not because the good thief was a particularly nice person. This is a really important lesson to take to heart. Sometimes I think we say, oh, well, this was such a wonderful person. Of course, they're in heaven. Remember the good thief. He admitted on, on the cross as he was being crucified, we have been justly condemned. He rebukes the other thief on the other side of Jesus, who is uh, berating Jesus. Well, if you're the Messiah, then show it, then save us. But he says, no, he admits, I deserve to be crucified. I deserve this punishment because of my sins. So we're not talking about a good person. We're talking about someone who had committed very serious crimes, who had committed very serious sins. And even he, by the grace of Jesus Christ, can receive redemption. And that's why I say this is such a merciful gospel, because it just shows how far the effect of Jesus's mercy is extended. So all of us have great hope for salvation because of the promise that we have in Jesus Christ. This man can be saved. The Lord's mercy can reach out to all of us and be consoled by that. So be consoled by that, that notion that there is nothing that is beyond forgiveness and there is nothing that is beyond Jesus' capacity to save. What do we find, though, that, uh, that brings about these words? We see the humble contrition. So if there's one thing that we're asked to do, simply to ask Jesus for forgiveness, to recognize, in fact, that, that we have sinned, to recognize that, in fact, we do need uh, the Lord's mercy. So we say, Jesus, remember me. So remember me, especially now and at the hour of my death. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful passage that reminds us of the mercy of Jesus, the Messiah. So having made that observation, let me just say a few words about the other readings that we have here. The, uh, the first reading, the prophet Daniel, he speaks about the great archangel Michael. Michael, St. Michael the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And so to invoke St. Michael, who he describes as the great prince and the guardian of your people, it's a good reminder that the Lord, not only does the Lord love us, but he also uh, gives us a great number of others who look after us and protect us. So we think about St. Michael the Archangel, who's our defender. We think about our own guardian angels. Every one of us has a guardian angel, which is a sign of God's love for us, as well as, in addition, the saints and the angels in heaven who are themselves also praying for us. See, we're not alone, and that's, I think, another wonderful lesson for us to take to heart, is that it's not just simply that the Lord loves us, but he's provided us with a great companion, with a great host that also loves us and prays for us and intercedes for us and protects us and guides us and shepherds us. And that is another wonderful thing for us to take to heart. So never be afraid to call upon St. Michael the Archangel. So as he, we ask him to, to help us in times of trial, to help us to resist temptations to sin. Um, we ask him to then purify us so that we, we might follow after the Lord with a sincere heart. The Lord, who is our shepherd, and nothing shall we want. We heard that in, that in the responsorial psalm. So what is it the Lord does? Another manifestation of his love for us, that he is a shepherd who watches over us, who guides us with his, with his staff, that gives us comfort, 
So we can have comfort knowing that if we rest near the Lord, if we follow his path, even in the dark valley. See, we think, we think sometimes this psalm, the 23rd psalm, is such a happy psalm. But remember that this psalm also talks about the times at which we have to go through great trial. Even in the dark valley, we do not fear, so there's no fear. Even in the sight of our foes, the Lord spreads a table before us. So there are some parts of the 23rd Psalm that really are very realistic. It's not, a, it's not just a purely happy psalm, because it acknowledges the fact that at times we have to confront our, our foes, our enemies, and go through dark valleys and dark places. But the optimism of this psalm, the hope of this psalm, is that the Lord walks with us during that time. The Lord's the one to nourish us, to anoint our head with oil, just as in the anointing of the sick. So the priest comes and then anoints with, with oil the, the head and the hands of the person, um, offering them that great sacrament. Never be afraid to call upon that sacrament as well, which is, a I think, symbolically represented in the, in the words of the psalm today. Um, and then also I, this wonderful, wonderful passage from St. Paul's letter to Timothy. Um, he talks again about the optimism and the hope that we have for salvation in Christ Jesus and the hope for eternal glory. And this is the saying, um, this is this wonderful poetic saying and, uh, that we have. It says, if we've died with him, then we shall live with him. Remember, we reminded ourselves of baptism at the beginning of this Mass. We used holy water, the sprinkling of holy water, which reminds us of our baptism. And baptism is a time of dying, dying to self and dying to sin. So if we have died with him, and that dying begins with our baptism in which we are claimed by Christ. If we have died with him, then we shall live with him. And if we persevere, then we shall reign with him. So there, that sounds very wonderful. Well, then the poem goes on from there. He says, but if we deny him, then he will deny us. So we're kind of expecting that he says, if we do the positive, then God will do positive. So we're hearing positive for positive. And then we're expecting to hear negative for negative. And he goes on to say, if we deny him, he will deny us. But then listen to this last line. And this is, this is the unexpected twist. This is this wonderful passage. But if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. See, it's not my negative followed by negative. Even if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Christ is always faithful. One of the things that we all recognize and we can see it in our own lives is at times we are unfaithful, we fail. Uh, every one of us commits sin. Um, so we won't pretend that there is a sin in the world and that, and that we ourselves um, aren't in need of God's mercy. But thanks be to God that even if we're unfaithful and at times we are, God himself remains faithful. Jesus is the faithful one, faithful and true, as the book of Revelation describes. Um, he is the one who is always faithful, and he perseveres in great love for us. And so it's in before the presence of the faithful Savior, the faithful Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we ask with confidence for the grace of salvation as we command Antonio into the merciful hands of our loving God. As we have every confidence because of the promises of the sacraments, as we have every confidence because of the promises that are given to us in Jesus Christ, as we also believe that our prayers are helpful and effective as we pray for all of those that have gone before us so let us also be built up with one another in confidence um, one of the things that we talk about with um, the works of mercy um, the church oftentimes talks about the corporal works of mercy so those are the ways in which we help one another in a physical sense and you probably have heard of a lot of these like feeding the hungry and giving drink to the thirsty and all that. And the last of those corporal works of mercy is to bury the dead. That's considered a great act of mercy to provide for a, a, an adequate burial, to provide for Christian burial. That's what we're doing right here today, is providing for Christian burial. It's a great act of mercy. But then in addition to that, the church also holds out seven spiritual works of mercy. Things like admonishing the sinner, counseling the doubtful, um, instructing the ignorant. Sometimes, I, sometimes those aren't as well known as the corporal works of mercy, but there, there are seven spiritual works of mercy, and they're wonderful as well. And the seventh of the spiritual works of mercy, to pray for the dead, 
So that there, in the last of the corporal works of mercy, bury the dead, and the last of the spiritual works of mercy, pray for the dead. And so please join me then as we pray. As we pray for Antonio and we pray for all of the faithful departed, and we pray confident in the mercy of our Savior as we pray for the gifts of salvation to be poured out upon him, especially in this Mass and also in our prayers, uh, which we lift up to a merciful and loving God the Father. Um, so again, thank you to the family for giving me the opportunity to come out um, to bless Antonio and to be with you at that time of loss. My prayers are with you today, and let all of our prayers be united as we commend Antonio into the best, in the best place that we possibly can, the merciful hands of our loving God and Savior. ask you to stand as we present our prayers and petitions. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for the church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, let us join our prayers to his. In baptism, Antonio received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Antonio seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother. Strengthen our hope that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as the altar is prepared. Please stand and pray to your friends that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. The praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his holy church. 
as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Antonio, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And sometimes this is where the sign of peace could be. Everyone had, should be safe, so you don't have to make any physical contact. But So we know that there's... Uh, we wish everyone peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Once again, I invite you to please kneel uh, before communion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of communion, I'll stand in front of the altar and invite people to come forward. They can come forward in two rows, um, and, uh, and I can come to anyone who, where, where it's difficult for you to approach. Um, everyone's invited to come forward, but just a reminder that uh, if anyone here, if you're not Catholic, or if you're not able to receive communion at this time, if you simply cross your arms over your chest like this, I'd be happy to give you a blessing.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Antonio may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So in just a moment, we'll have the prayers of commendation, which I'll say in front of the altar. And uh, But just before I do that, um, there's just an invitation that um, the ladies that help with the parish um, they offer oftentimes on the day of funerals, they offer a luncheon, um, which I think is actually really a great act of service to families during times of loss. So there is a luncheon that follows immediately afterwards. It's downstairs. Um, so it's underneath the, the main body of the church in the parish hall. And you're all welcome to come down. So if you're able to stay afterwards, please feel free to do so and join us for a luncheon. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Please join me in reciting the antiphon. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to greet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Antonio in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads to pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, Amen. and let perpetual Amen. light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.